Warning, this video contains team selection and captain choices which some viewers may find offensive. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. Before starting today, a quick word about OneFootball who have kindly sponsored this video. The world's best football news app is now even better, relaunching with a fresh new design. Gain access to news, scores and stats from leagues all over the world with a brand new interface that's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. As for FPL, you can follow each team in the Premier League and get live updates from all the goals and assists every game week. Download it for free using the link in the description box below. In game week 18, I opted to use my second wildcard very early into the season and prepare my team for the big double game week 19 along with the view of using the bench boost. So let's see how it all panned out. On the bench this week were Johnston, Callum Wilson, Roman Sice and Rob Holding. And despite these four players having six fixtures between them in game week 19, there was only the one return in Rob Holding's clean sheet. In the end, the bench boost brought home a total score of 13 points, which to be fair I'd class as a bit of a fail. In all honesty though, I'm not too worried about this underwhelming bench boost score, and if anything, I'm just happy now to have this chip out of the way, and for the remainder of the season, I can put a bit more focus now into the starting 11, and no longer have to worry about having a really strong 15 for the bench boost anymore. Despite the bench boost not doing too well, fortunately the rest of my team certainly made up for it. On the wild card last week, I chose to double up on John Stones and Diaz, with Man City's defensive numbers being unparalleled by any other team at the moment. It was a decision that could not have gone any better, with a ridiculous 45 points from just the two centre-backs. For Ruben Diaz to assist a John Stones goal was simply dreamland stuff, and although very, very fortunate, it was just nice to finally be on the end of one of those for a change. Kevin De Bruyne's 8-pointer was slightly underwhelming as captain, especially considering the two nice home fixtures they had this double game week, and to see him go off before the 60-minute mark in the second game was disappointing, but I can have no complaints thanks to John Stones and Ruben Diaz. Another key decision on the wildcard last week was including Mikhail Antonio in the squad, with West Ham boasting a very tantalising double game week of their own. My transfer in of Suchek may not have done the business, but Antonio and Sufal certainly did, with another 30 points between them. There were also returns from Son, Fernandez, and Martinez in goal, so overall plenty of good returns for Double Game Week 19, and my strategy of using the wildcard early certainly paid off on this occasion. So for Game Week 19, it was a superb result for my recently wildcarded squad, returning a massive and season-defining 135 points. With the average being 74 last week, it's of course given me a huge boost in ranking, jumping half a million places from 760k to 280k, and at least my season now looks a tad more respectable at the halfway point. Granted, there's still a long way to go, and I'm very aware that even 280k isn't considered a good rank for many people's standards, but like I said, it still feels good to have a very solid game week and make the rank a bit more respectable now, and hopefully I can continue rising up the rankings. So let's move on to game week 20 now and see how the team currently lines up as well as any potential transfer plans. Also, if you enjoy the content here at FPL TV, then be sure to leave a like and most importantly get subscribed. You can also hit the notification bell so you always know when a new video goes live. My initial plan heading into game week 20 was that I would simply carry a free transfer this week and make no changes, with my side looking fairly well set up. That plan may now be out of the window though, because as we know, Kevin De Bruyne is confirmed out injured for roughly 4-6 to six weeks, so a decision now has to be made on who to replace him with. With Callum Wilson as first sub in my squad on the bench in game week 20, my thinking was I could just play him at home to Leeds this week, therefore giving me a bit more time to think about my replacement for De Bruyne. Newcastle and Wilson have been extremely poor over the last few weeks, but at home to Leeds, he's not the worst option to have in the squad this week. However, in more recent news, during United's FA Cup victory over Liverpool on Sunday, it now looks as if Marcus Rashford may have also picked up a small injury as well, now putting him as a slight doubt for Sheffield United. With De Bruyne definitely out for game week 20, and with Rashford now also a possibility, it looks as if my hand may be forced into making a transfer this game week. Granted, I do have a big squad as things stand, and even Rob Holding can come in away to Southampton this week if I wanted, but with De Bruyne and Rashford costing 20 million plus, it's a lot of money to go into game week 20 without. 
So, as for De Bruyne replacements, there's a few options in consideration. The straightforward move is to simply bring Mo Salah back into the squad. Under usual circumstances, this one would be an absolute no-brainer, but recently the Egyptian has been very off form in the league, now blanking in five straight games. At this price point though, Raheem Sterling is also under consideration, simply down to Man City's very favourable upcoming fixtures. Sterling hasn't exactly justified his price recently either, but with games against West Brom and Sheffield United in just the next two, could he be worth the punt? Especially as a strong differential captain option this week against a West Brom side who have conceded 13 goals in their last four games. The other option I have is to downgrade De Bruyne to a cheaper price point. And speaking of Man City's excellent upcoming fixtures, as well as potentially more double game weeks on the horizon for City, then Ilkay Gundogan is becoming an option that's very hard to ignore. For me personally, he was never a player that I was interested in from an FPL perspective, but he is ticking a lot of boxes as things stand. He's a bargain 5.5 million, with 5 goals in his last 7, who's likely on penalties with De Bruyne being out, as well as boasting some very promising underlying numbers. Simply put, there's a lot to like there, even more so with his bargain price. But I'm not sure, something doesn't quite feel right about transferring in a player who up until a few weeks back has never really been a viable FPL option. The last De Bruyne replacement for me is Jack Grealish, who's been ever reliable all season and has ticked over nicely. He has lost his goal scoring form of late, but with Ross Barkley now back in the side, perhaps that can help Grealish get back in amongst the goals. His creative stats however are still incredible, where in the last 8 game weeks, he's top for chances created and second behind De Bruyne for big chances created. The only big drawback of buying Grealish at the moment is notably he is one yellow card away from a one match ban, and for him to avoid this ban he needs to avoid getting booked in the next two Premier League games, so in the short term there's a slight risk involved there. So for me, that's the four players under consideration to bring in this game week, and I'll have a think over the next day on which way to go. As mentioned, Mo Salah would usually be the straightforward move, but his form at the moment is certainly a concern. By opting for a cheaper midfield option instead, that would provide me an easy route into upgrading Callum Wilson to Harry Kane in future game weeks, which is also something I have in mind. For the captaincy in game week 20, with De Bruyne out and Rashford now an uncertainty, that narrows down my captain choices to two options. The simple move is to captain Bruno Fernandes this week at home to bottom of the league Sheffield United. He'll no doubt be an extremely popular captain within the game this week, and for game week 20 I'd probably call him captain sensible. However, with Newcastle looking completely hopeless at the moment, and thinking back to a few game weeks ago when Leeds stuck 5 goals past the tune, then Patrick Bamford is a differential captain I have considered. The under pressure Steve Bruce will be desperate for a win in this one, and that could play into the hands of Leeds who are always very attacking. The only other player in my thinking for captaincy this week would be if I was to transfer in Raheem Sterling. As mentioned, Sterling isn't in the best goal scoring form as things stand, but it would be a move purely based on the fixture, with West Brom still shipping goals even under Sam Allardyce. Since Big Sam took charge in game week 14, no team has conceded more goals than West Brom in that time, shipping 17 goals in just 6 games. So that's all my thoughts heading into game week 20. As usual this season, I'll be waiting as late as possible to make my transfer moves, just in case there is any more new developments. As always though, if you are interested to see my final team lineup, transfers and captaincy choice, then I'll post it over on the FPL TV Twitter page shortly before the game week deadline. Good luck to you all for game week 20, FPL responsibly and I'll catch you all very soon.